Okay, friends. Uh, now let's talk about the non-canonical structures of DNA. As we know, DNA is the most important, probably the most important part of a cell uh, that that uh, can exist uh, in Earth from the beginning of the life, which is continuing the journey of life uh, throughout the evolutionary history. Now, this DNA, as we know, can be found in various structures. In previous times, it has been thought that DNA is only found in one type of structures, which is generally uh, seen is the double helical structure of DNA. And among those double helical structure, now we know that there are variations. Sometimes those structures, the orientations are varying, their helix pitch is varying, and number of residue per turn will vary, and that will change uh, the structure of DNA to make different types of DNA like A DNA, B DNA, and Z DNA. Among those DNAs, B DNA is the most common one. What uh, Watson Creek, uh, Creek was uh, proposed, Watson Creek proposed to us the structure of that B DNA. Now nowadays we know that th that B DNA what we, uh, we we used to know about a very parallel uh, conformation of uh, two two strands winding with each other to make a structure is not at all parallel and stabilized like that. It is uh, it is sometimes twisted. It is sometimes bended and. Uh, it, it produces several types of structural uh, features, structural modifications and the structural modification leads to the production of really really complicated structures of DNA. Now uh, the modern investigations about DNA structure will help us to understand uh, the interactions of DNA strands with each other. Uh, due to the presence of different types of DNA sequences inside the DNA which will determine the structure of DNA. Sometimes the DNA will, will, will uh, make a triple helical structure, sometimes it makes a structure with four strands and to make different types of structure. Some of the structures are favorable in nature, some of them are not very much favorable due to the sterical hindrance but still this kind of structure can be seen uh, in different forms of cellular uh, processing like uh, molecular processes like from uh, DNA replication to the protein translation. Uh, okay. Now, uh, what is the driving force for having those uh, different varieties of structure inside the DNA? Is the one answer for that is uh, the presence of different types of sequences. So this is the DNA sequences that determines the structure of DNA that determines the exact structure of DNA or how the structure of the DNA will be. So as we know that uh, all, all the basis of the structural features has been giving a rise uh, to because of the presence of DNA structures. So different types of DNA structure give a rise to different types of DNA. Now let me take a color. So here we have this. Okay. Now uh, here we uh, start to talk about this as we know that this kind of structures are being favored because of the uh, process of specific DNA sequences and sequence motifs. Okay, so r the presence of specific DNA sequences r sometimes they are repeated, sometimes they are inverted, sometimes they are mirror repeats out there, sometimes they, they will attach together in some different ways, sometimes we have a direct repeat of our, our poly uh, nu nucle nucleotide sequences like poly G or poly A, poly T like sequences. This kind of sequences give rise to different uh, non canonical structures of DNA. Some of them are being called the cruciform structures, some of them are called the HDNA, some of them are called the quadruplex DNA, the triplex DNA and the slippery DNA and all this type of DNA. Uh, I am going to discuss about all this type of DNA one by one. Now in this case what we know what type of different uh, structural sequential motifs we can find in uh, DNA structure is uh, one is uh, the inverted repeat. Second one is a pa so we can find inverted repeats, palindromic repeats, mirror repeats, and direct repeats. So these are the four type of repeat sequences that we can find in a DNA. And these repeat sequences plays a very important role to make structures like quadruplex DNA and triplex DNA. We'll see in uh, in a later uh, part of our discussion. Now we can also find uh, the continuous residue of homopurine or homopyrimidine. So if you have homopurine residues like homo uh, so poly A or sometimes poly T uh, uh, homopyrimidine gives a poly T, so that's, these things can be found. So we can find the G rich region. We can find the AT rich sequences. So all the presence of all these different types of sequences have different types of consequences. Suppose, as we know. If you are having G rich sequences, then uh, the opposite of that we have to have C sequence uh, according to the law of uh, Shargoff, uh, rule of Shargoff's ratio. Now, for having this, as we know, G e pairs with C with three 
hydrogen bonds so this uh, pairing is really strong so if we are having higher amount of GC bonds that means that the melting temperature for the DNA will be high so we need high temperature to add for melting the temperature uh, the DNA is, uh, down or separate those strands of DNA now if a DNA is made up with more and more AT rich sequences that means A and T pair with each other uh, in normally in less common uh, in, in less uh, strength uh, less there is two hydrogen bonding that means uh, uh, if we are find uh, having this more and more AT rich sequences then it, it will be easier for bending the DNA from this AT rich regions so we will uh, we'll see all these things in my later part of our discussion now let's begin from the different types of repeats now here we are talking about the different types of repeats uh, that we can find uh, inside the structure of a DNA so for example in the first place we are talking about the, the simple from simple uh, which is a direct repeat now if you start from here as you can see uh, from this 5 prime to 3 prime direction so it is anti parallel orientation 5 prime to 3 prime then then inversely 3 prime to 5 uh, 5 prime to 3 prime in the inverse direction now we have TCAGAG so after uh, this part we can see the invert uh, this repeat sequences now again it the same sequence is repeating so TCAG uh, GAG again TCAGAG so this is a repeating one after another so one two three then again one two three that is called the direct repeat what we can see in this case same thing happens in the opposite direction but maintaining the complementary nature of the DNA that means if we have a G in the opposite side we have, a, we have to have a C so if you think C T C T G A then from here again we have to have C T C T G A okay now let's uh, focus on the mirror repeats now what is a mirror repeat as the name suggests if we consider a mirror at this uh, particular plane here then you can find this sequence in the in this left hand side t t a g c a c and uh, if we put a mirror what the other mirror image that you can find in the opposite side of the mirror is c a c g a t t like that so c a c g a t t look at this so and same thing can happen uh, in opposite side as you can see because uh, all these things are formed this bond uh, this the double strands are formed bonds using the complementary nature of the dna so we can see the same thing here so we have to say that we have a 5 prime here 3 uh, 3 prime so this direction has to be maintained properly and again here is the 5 prime and here is the 3 prime okay so the direction has to be maintained properly but still this is called a mirror repeat but because we can consider a mirror in in this plane and after plating, uh, putting this mirror we can find this sequence looking at the mirror that's why it's called a mirror sequence so uh, if I do like this 1 2 3 then the sequence will be 3 2 1 after right after 1 2 3 so here is a mirror so this is called the mirror sequence now let us talk about the final one which is a palindromic sequences which is a little bit complicated but is uh, simple so just look at here this is the same uh, like this mirror repeat but instead of having this mirror placed on the same plane we will place it in the opposite strand okay so in this case what we can see the mirror has been put in the same strand that's why we are fi finding this mirror repeat but in palindromes this is also we are talking about a mirror repeat but the the mirror which the imaginary mirror has been placed not in uh, in the the same strand where we talk about the first sequence uh, the mirror is placed in the other strand so we are uh, considering st uh, this this strand so T T A G C A C but we are putting the mirror in the opposite strand that means not in this strand if we call strand A and strand B then we, uh, we have to put the mirror on strand B after putting this mirror on strand B at this place then you can find from here C A C G A T T so again C A C G A T T so the sequence will be this is the part so we have one two three we have to put the mirror but we are not putting the mirror in this uh, strand we are putting it here so from here we have three two one but in, in the mirror sequence what we find in, in the mirror repeat we have one two three we are putting the mirror on the same strand and we are having three two one okay so that is the difference between this palindromic sequence and mirror repeats now let us talk about the bent DNA now uh, what is a bent DNA as the name suggests and, and as the picture, picture is suggesting us that the bent DNA means the DNA structure is slightly bent uh, uh, bent in such a way that it, it, it can wrap around a circular molecule in this case as we can see so they, they, it, there will be a circular molecule now what type of circular molecule DNA need uh, uh, to, uh, to wrap around most often they are proteins right so we need proteins uh, uh, on on which on to which this DNA will bend a structure like this to form a structure like this. 
Now this bend of DNA can be done uh, because of the presence of more and more AT rich sequences. So if there are more AT rich sequences that means uh, there are less strong bonding so uh, because the AT uh, sequences are attached together via two hydrogen bonds so they are weak in nature so you can easily bend DNA where we find more and more AT rich sequences rather than the GC rich sequences. So that is one part and another important point is that then when you are making this DNA bend most of the time what happens this this uh, major groups are facing the outwards and the minor groups are facing the inward portion as you can see in the picture in this picture this yellow color strand uh, is made of uh, these parts are all the major groups uh, these are the major groups and all this part which are denoted with red color here uh, most of the time are minor groups okay now uh, as this uh, DNA start to bend these major groups are getting broadened but the minor groups are getting really really narrower so these minor groups are getting narrowed but the major group it is really broadened so this is uh, how this DNA bend is possible now why we need this kind of DNA bends we need this kind of DNA bends uh, to wrap around proteins like histone remember because we have to store DNA inside the cell so DNA is really long molecule if it's uh, present in eukaryotic DNA linear form that it will be hard for us to store this all DNA that's why we need to wrap this DNA uh, around a protein molecule which are normally histones so after wrapping it uh, onto the histone we store this DNA into make uh, the really really tightly packed fiber and to make this okay now bending also occurs because of the photochemical damage or mispairing of bases and uh, serve as a recognition site for DNA uh, DNA repair as we know okay so uh, so normally what happens when we have any kind of mutations is going on any type of photochemical damage is done inside the DNA the DNA have to cope up with that damage and DNA bends its structure some things like that but uh, normal in normal situations uh, DNA can be found bent uh, by wrapping uh, to wrap around uh, onto the protein structures like histone okay now let us talk about the cruciform DNA the structure of cruciform DNA now what do we mean by this cruciform DNA now it is uh, normally uh, the inverted repeats uh, as we can see in this picture so here uh, we start from the DNA for example from here on we have T so, so these highlight regions just focus on these highlight regions we have GAA CG TCC and again uh, we are having G G A uh, so G G A so that means this is not a mirror repeat not either a direct repeat sequences but what happens if we consider if we look at really closely then you can find this G A A G G T C C and the opposite side C C T uh, G uh, G C A A G that means if we place a mirror but uh, up to looking at this point if we place a mirror in the opposite strand we can find a mirrors repeat for this for, for this sequence that means we are talking about a palindromic sequence in this case so in this case we are having what is called a palindromic sequence as you know palindromic sequences are uh, the inverted sequences of mirror repeat in, uh, in uh, the opposite strands as you can see so these are the palindromic sequences and presence of this palindromic sequences will change uh, will help this uh, DNA to make a structure which is called this which is looks like this cross that's why it is called the cruciform DNA now in this case how the cruciform DNA is being formed is uh, due to the presence of gentle heat to disrupt the hydrogen bonds so the first thing we have to do to make this cruciform DNA is to disrupt the structure of hydrogen bond disrupt the interaction between uh, the double strands of DNA to, to make uh, to deal to omit these hydrogen bonds uh, after deleting these hydrogen bonds we have a chance or, or uh, th so this this party particular uh, both of the strands become loosened with each other and uh, up to few of the sequences or few regions uh, they are linked with each other but most of the part they are free so these regions where you can see CT and all these regions have a tendency to bind with to bind with uh, its uh, complementary sequence that we can find in the opposite side due to the presence of this palindromic sequence in, in uh, two separate regions it has a tendency to stick things together like velcro okay so it sticks together like a velcro and make a bond like that but we can see also in, uh, because of the presence of this gap which is not made up with any repeated sequence or palindromic sequences this gap uh, as, as a result of the um, 
result of this hydrogen uh, dis bonding disruption uh, this part of the region will stop to make hydrogen bonds between them so they'll bulge out uh, to make uh, this structure like a bulbs like that in the end of this cruciform dna that gives us characteristics loop like structure in both of the ends but in other ends we have the simple structure so what happens again let me consider so all these hydrogen bonds are disrupted and what happens this red part will bind with this this blue part as you can see here and this red will bind with this blue as you can see here which is light in color and what happens these regions will be will form this part and this region will form this part so that's why that's how the cruciform DNA is being formed now cruciform structures are very important at the origin of DNA replication we can find more and more cruciform uh, structures in the start point of DNA replication in mammalian cells and have been shown to recruit different types of proteins new types of proteins which are called cruciform binding protein uh, to start the replication process Okay, now we can find this cruciform DNA uh, near positive control regions of a gene at the origin of DNA replication. So that's why the importance of having this cruciform DNA at the starting point of DNA replication is really, really important. So we, we can find this cruciform DNA at the beginning of DNA replication and it will, it will uh, recruit some of the proteins which are called the DNA cruciform binding protein which, which will in turn bind to the cruciform DNA and finally helps this DNA to be, uh, to be replicated properly. Okay, so that's the function of cruciform DNA. Now here are some interesting facts about the cruciform DNA and that this existence of inverted repeats of this double stranded DNA is not necessary uh, but uh, it's, it's not it's, it's, it is necessary but it is not a sufficient condition to form this cruciform there are other conditions to be maintained that the presence of this palindromic sequence is very very important and, uh, and those palindromic sequences uh, have to be separated uh, by uh, using some uh, stretches of uh, I mean uh, some stretches of the nucleotides okay now in a relaxed DNA cruciforms are not likely to form because the linear DNA accommodated more hydrogen bonded stacked base pairs than the cruciform structures that's why we can find in normal times we cannot find uh, cruciform DNA in relaxed DNA so we can uh, th this kind of formation of cruciform DNA is generated uh, just before the production of more and more DNA from the existing DNA that means at the time of replication that means at the beginning of cell division cycle now unwinding uh, so another important thing is the formation of cruciform structure is not favored at the DNA regions that consist of mirror repeats so we, we cannot find this cruciform at the direct mirror repeats because such structures would be constructed from parallel rather than anti-parallel DNA strands and we need uh, the, the this kind of mirror repeats on the anti-parallel strands uh, that means we need the palindromic sequence for making this cruciform if we, we are having only mirror regions or mirror sequences uh, of uh, nucleotides then uh, it is not pro the it probable way that they will interact and form this kind of cruciform DNA okay now uh, let us move on to our next slide so here is the triple uh, let's talk about the triple stranded dna now some some as we know that uh, triple stranded dna is most of the time in the previous situations that people start to know that it is not possible or even in at the beginning of the uh, of this discovery of the dna structure linus pauling gave us a model of triplex of dna which was incorrect because he, he put those uh, nitrogenous bases at the outside or the external place ex external environment and put the phosphate at the internal environment which was wrong in Indeed, as we know, but now we know uh, that triplex stranded DNA can be formed, or triple stranded DNA can be formed, uh, putting those uh, bases on the in inside and the backbone on the outside. But to make this kind of triple stranded bond, what we need most importantly, we need a separate or different types of interaction between those bases what we call uh, is a Hookstein base pairing so what do we mean by a Hookstein base pairing it is a slightly different base pairing than uh, the Watson Creek because in Watson Creek pairing we know that adenine will have adenine have to pair with thymine and guanine have to pair with cytosine uh, so this is the one and one bonding so one pure purine with one pyrimidine this kind of bonding but in Hookstein pairing what we can say is that uh, three uh, nucleotide bases can pair bonds with each other that means uh, for example here we can have one purine uh, so example one adenine in this case and two thymine 
to make bond with that aden adenine. This type of bond will be called a Hookstein pairing, which is not denoted or uh, or discovered by uh, Watson and Crick. So, and, and it may also possible that we have one guanine and two cytosine to make a bond, which is also uh, a example of Hookstein pairing. Now, uh, to to make this kind of triple bonds, or uh, the ability for this uh, purine residue to make uh, bond with two pyrimidine residues, uh, giving uh, us the giving the new DNA the uh, the the degree of freedom to make this triple stranded structures. Okay. Now, if you go on here, you can s uh, look at the structure. Now, you can see the nuclear bases. Uh, uh, so, in this case, uh, for example, here we have a one adenine at the middle. This is the adenine and two thymine here. Now, they can form bonds because as we know this part and this part is the normal regions where you can found, find bonds in case of uh, watson creek base pairing but uh, this is the other regions of this the another hydrogen which is found in this nh portion and another uh, hydrogen that is provided by an th that thymine uh, can also pair with this in the in from 7 in 7 portion of purine of adenine to make another bond so this kind of bond formation helps to make a triplex structure stable okay now you can uh, see the same thing happen for the uh, for the bonding with G and C now one important consideration about this that we have we are having this uh, simple duplex structure as you can see in this picture so at this structure as we know we have a major group we have a minor group so it's a helical arrangement and it that that make this major and minor groups now uh, now if we add another strand which is the third strand uh, for this DNA where the strand is going to be interacted why the strand is going to interact with this other two the answer is this third strand is going to interact with the major groups of DNA so that's why what happens it will uh, engage with the engage to make bonds or hydrogen bonds from the major group side of the DNA so finally to make a compact structure of the DNA possible okay now the unique Hookstein hydrogen bonding patterns of guanine adenine provides a specific similar uh, similarity and specificity uh, similar like the Watson Creek so the specificity will remain the same so it, it will not hamper uh, the hamper the, the specificity of a dna it will not hamper the specific uh, the, the interactions of uh, the dub double strands or or the uh, or it will not hamper the structure of uh, or or uh, what we can say the complementary nature of the dna but still that kind of dna can form now you can see how the triple strand is for uh, is trained to form inside the dna this is a normal D ds dna and ss dna triplex as you can see but this type of dna can also be formed due to the interaction of two dna and we can see this kind of picture during the uh, the recovery of dna repair as we know and also you can see in case of dna recombination we can see this kind of triplex structures so this presence of this triplex structure is not uncommon as we know but the interaction will be differing from this place so in this picture as you can see this is the DSDNA and this is another DSDNA now one strand of this DSDNA will go and interacting with other two strands of the previous DSDNA to make a triple strand uh, at this particular region of the DNA so we can find this kind of structures so it may not possible that the from the beginning of the DNA at the end of the DNA we have a triple uh, triplex of the DNA that is not the case that is not at all the case we can find but we can find structures in between the DNA strand that there is made uh, which are made up with the triplex strand of DNA so we have a long stretch of DNA from uh, 5 prime to 3 prime uh, strand and the linear DNA arrangement in between them some of the sequences are involved to make this triplex stru structures okay so uh, this triplex structures are important in many cases as we know uh, so if we uh, think uh, another type of Hookstein pairing as we can see here so which is called a reverse Hookstein pairing so let me tell what is the reverse, reverse Hookstein as we know the Hookstein if we uh, consider uh, from suppose uh, we have a strand here for 5 prime to 3 prime we have another 3 prime to 5 prime which is uh, which is uh, the anti parallel in orientation finally make a bonds like this which is a simple Hookstein pairing now if we invert this uh, this structure of this basis if we invert the basis out and finally make the though we can invert the this basis it still can make bond with each other and those kind of bonds will be called the inverse Hookstein base pairing on inverse Hookstein base as we can know which will be TAT so again in this uh, like this we can have 
now uh, so here we can see as in double helical structures base stacking plays a key role in stabilization of this triplex structure so base stacking is also very important during the triplex structure but another important thing is the hydrogen bonding and uh, hydrogen bonding is really important for in these cases the bringing of this three triple helixes this is a very important assumption so uh, hear it very properly that bringing this three triple helixes as we are bringing three helices uh, so three backbone which are phosphate three phosphate backbones which are all negatively charged so due to uh, binding these three triple helices together uh, which are all negatively charged backbone uh, strand together which increases the electrostatic repulsion and as a result of this electrostatic repulsion the dna structure are not very much stable so the three triple helices is less stable than the associated watson creek double helix okay the presence of mag uh, magnesium ions or other uh, multivalent cation stabilizes the triple helix structure of the dna dye uh, that's why so as we know if we pr place all this uh, three uh, strands together which are all negative which are uh, there is a scope of repulsion but this kind of repulsion can be minimized if we add some bivalent ions in inside that like magnesium like calcium so if we add this magnesium or calcium ions inside so if if inside a cell if we increase uh, the percentage of uh, magnesium and calcium ions then it it has a tendency uh, to to just stabilize this this triple helix structure and uh, that that's what is going on all the time so remember in the starting point of all this replication uh, scheme or sometimes in, during the recombination scheme we can find the presence of this magnesium co uh, as a cofactor for different enzymes so we need magnesium in all these cases because the presence of magnesium is really really important in all the situations to stabilize the triple helical structure because uh, uh, we are as we have seen before in the uh, in the previous picture that uh, this kind of triple helix structure can be formed uh, during uh, the during uh, the recombination process now <coughs> Now let us talk about the hydrogen uh, HDNA, <laughs> not so hydrogen, but this is called the HDNA. Now, uh, what is this HDNA? This is an intramolecular triple helix can be formed by disruption of double helical structure DNA structures with polyputin sequences uh, uh, in mirror repeats. Now, uh, as we can, as we, uh, as I can see uh, this picture, so pictures illustrates really finely as you can see. So this is uh, nothing but the HDNA is nothing but a triplex DNA or DNA. With the triple helix structure so it is a slight modification of this triple helix dna as we can see this this is formed due to the intra uh, internal hydrogen uh, inter uh, 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 strand interaction intra strand interactions like that so what we can find in this case as we can see uh, so these are the two common uh, as, as we can see common hydro uh, dna so you have five prime uh, here the green and you have the three prime of the green and you have a three prime here and a five prime of something like this here so here we have something here this is another five prime you can say now what happens this is uh, the straight dna molecule as we can see what can be possible that uh, the, this dna molecule uh, due to the some structural stress or something like that from particular region it can be bent so where from where it is bending uh, here is, is the joint which is shown uh, shown here which is the joint between this blue and yellow colored uh, ring uh, yellow colored uh, length and from here this is the this is the bending and from here on uh, so this is the same strand as we can see as we can follow from here the three prime five prime strand we can see this is the same strand and the same strand is bending so if i follow this strand uh, from here li like this so here we have the same strand it is coming down and down and down up to here so as you can see up to here in the previous times we have two strands interacting together like uh, we can find in common dna but whenever uh, w the strand is bending start to bend then e here is another extend the extension of the strand it start to coil with the double stranded dna so it is a previously double stranded dna and now the same stretches of dna uh, which is a yellow in color or denoted with yellow in in this picture start to interact with this double strand dna so this is another single strand will interact with this double strand to make a triple strand of dna as you can see so this part of the uh, total dna structure this region of the total dna structure uh, we find three dna three dna strands are uh, winding with each other to make this triplex structure as I have told before then whole stretches of DNA is not made up with this triplex DNA structure in few part in some region of the DNA we can find this structure so in this case 
the making of this hdna uh, we have to have a bending in dna structure so the bending is really really important to make this kind of structure now if we look at the molecule molecular level of the, the less uh, complex of the schematic presentation we can find that from here on we have a bending and after the bending so this is this is the line of 3 prime dna that we can follow from uh, in this previous picture so here we have in this bending now this bent dna start to interact with this previous ds dna so this is the ds dna this is the ss dna uh, i've talked before they will interact to make uh, the strands uh, this triple helical strand what you can find here Th this region is a triple helical strands okay so that's why uh, uh, as we know this triple helix can be formed not only by interaction of two dna as we've seen before uh, that that we have two dna's and this part will come here and in this uh, second picture so here we have some structure like this and this so here we have the triplex dna not only here on the triplex dna can be formed but also using same dna strand that you can see here the sli uh, using slightly bending of the dna strand we can form this kind of triple helices and this kind of dna is called the h dna and this dna is being formed because uh, because of the intra strand interactions okay so that's it now what are the functions of this hdna as you know this uh, polypurine uh, as you can see in this case most of the time this d this kind of dna is formed uh, due to the presence of the repeated sequence like you can see ag 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 sequence like that you have ct 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 so it's a repeated sequence of polypurine as you can see in this place ag 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 so that is a remarkable feature for making this hydrogen uh, this hdna so two things one we uh, three things actually one is uh, it's a uh, interaction in intra uh, str intra uh, strand uh, of dna second thing it, it we have to have a bend to make this kind of structure third thing it has it is not made it throughout the whole structure of dna it can be found only into a particular stretches of dna fourth thing we need to have a, a polypurine residue if i delete all this all this inks here now you can see we are having a polypurine residues here which is ag 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 in the opposite we have the poly uh, pyrimidine residues to inter to interact together to make a structure like this so if we we are not having a structure of polypurine and polypyrimidine here the, this kind of dna cannot be formed so that is another important assumption now this uh, this potential triple helical regions are especially common near sequences involved in gene regulation so that's why the the formation of this hydro uh, this hdna sorry this is not a hydrogen dna this is hdna uh, th th that is really really important it has been proposed that hdna play a role in rna synthesis too but it is proposed only uh, much more research has to be done on this particular topic but uh, it has been seen in several different occasions that uh, this hdna can be found largely uh, in uh, in uh, the common places where we have the sequence in, uh, involved in gene regulation most importantly in case of uh, eukaryotic cells now uh, we can also find this hdna in the initiation and the termina termination uh, points of replication and you can also find them in recombination as we, as i have showed you before okay now let's talk about another impor important structure uh, another uh, non canonical structure of dna which is called the dna quadruplex structure so uh, what do we mean by quadruplex as the name suggests this is a structure where we are having uh, the four uh, interactions so four strands are interacting so it may not be the individual four strands but uh, it, it may be an extension of a strand which will bending in some way but we need four strands to 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 four uh, nucleotide base to be to donate to finally make a stru quadruplex structure of a dna now as we know uh, to make this kind of quadruplex structure of a dna we need more and more guanine nucleotides as the guanine nucleotides have a high capability to make hookstein base, base pairing in both the ways so guanine has a very very good capability to making lots more hookstein pairing rather than the adenine uh, from the spirine groups uh, so, so from the spurine groups uh, sorry so that's why to make this quadruplex structure the first thing the first thing we need is uh, the presence of large amount of guanine rich polynucleotide sequences in a particular stretch of dna now second thing this polynucleotides can interact to form tetra uh, tetraplex structures 
they, they start to form tetraplex structures. Now, as we know, in the previous times when you talk about the triple triple helix, then we, we, we consider the three strands together, it is very, very difficult. But now we are involving four strands to make uh, make bonds or some bond like this. So that will be much more difficult than the previous one because all the strand backbone are negatively charged. So there will be a tendency for rep repelling those charges together. So how can you cope up with that? We need more and more ions like sodium and potassium to make the structure really really stabilized okay so a lot of this iron are very really needed to make a structure now here we can find uh, the structure so he, these are the guanine as we can see these all are the guanine structures so it's the stretches of guanine that we can find they will interact with each other a lot more hookstein pairing so if we consider this is a guanine it will make hookstein with this two if it, this is a guanine it will make a normal with this so, so these two guanine are making hookstein pairing and other two are pairing the normal bond of nature so it they, they are also the four of the guanine are making hookstein based pairing with each other to make this kind of bond so as we can see lot of interactions are involving lot of repulsions are involving so this kind of structure are really really less favorable less uh, stereochemically st uh, stable but still we can find this kind of structure and more importantly we can find this kind of structure in a very important region of a eukaryotic dna eukaryotic genome which are called the telomeres so the inside at the end of this uh, our chromosomes which are called the telomere regions we can find lot of this quadruplex structure of DNA because uh, we in at that point we need to have a stabilization of DNA because most of the time after each round of replication as we know the telomere region is getting shortened uh, because of uh, the delay of the polymers activity because polymers do not have a, uh, have a framework uh, to to attach and start uh, uh, adding the primer that's why so uh, normally uh, the cell uh, cope up with that uh, situation using the uh, telomerase enzyme but still in this case uh, we have lot of this uh, g proteins to make a cap at the end of the telomere which prevents the telomere to get damaged to be get it damaged and as we get uh, getting uh, aged this part of the DNA is getting hampered and it, it will lead to the consequence of the aging. Now as you can see in the structure what we can have, we can have this normal structure of four strands which can make a bond which is not common in, in nature. This is, a, uh, this is a mathematic representation, not common. But what we have the second structure, this is uh, very very common because we have only one stretch of, stretch of DNA from this five prime to this three prime. So if we consider one single strand from here the five prime and to the three prime and we arrange this five prime to three prime arrangement in this such a way, they can fold to, to provide uh, 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 four guanine at the same plane. So whatever we are doing, whether we are having one strand uh, of guanine stretch, polyguanine stretch, or two strands of polyguanine, what we can see in this picture, uh, whatever we have the four strands of polyguanine, we need to provide four guanine residues in the same plane to make uh, uh, four pairs of hydrogen bonding. Okay, so that is the basic concept. So whatever type we are using, we are, if we are using the same uh, strand of polyguanine residue, that's fine. But we still have to produce, uh, uh, provide four guanine residues at the same plane. What we are pro providing here, we can providing here by using two uh, two different strands so this kind of thing can can go on so these are the structures uh, we can see uh, uh, as we can see in this picture so uh, uh, from the top view you can see something like that so four guanine residues are being provided from each of the strands to make a structure so it may not necessary that we have to have a four different strands four independent strand we can have one strand and then that strand will arrange in such a way that will provide the four guanine but the basic is to provide we have to provide the four guanine structure now uh, the role of this four-stranded DNA structure again I've told you that uh, we can find in, 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 in uh, the telomeres which is really really important but we can also find this quadruplex structures in regulatory regions of the DNA so we can see most of the structures we have talked about the three uh, the, the triplex structure of the DNA and the quadruplex structure of the DNA most of the structure are being found in the regulatory regions of the genes because most of the part these are the sequences these are the special types of DNA structures or arrangements 
attachment that uh, indicates something that indicates special types of proteins that come here and bind with me because these are the designation points these are the starting points so they tag themselves by by transferring the structure of uh, their DNA in, in different stretches of DNA so the long genome inside the genome few part is made the triplex structure that they tag themselves uh, using this triplex structure they invite some proteins to sit on them and go on uh, doing something and sometimes they form the cruciform structure then they provide and they finally invite polymerase and all this uh, binding proteins all this cruciform binding proteins to come and sit and and, and they tell then start replication we need this DNA to be replicated so this kind of signal so all the presence of this kind of uh, uh, non-canonical structures that you can find in DNA is having uh, definitely is having a meaning and the meaning most often is uh, to to interact with proteins or to interact with other types of molecules inside a cell and to tag themselves with some of the some of the regions to tag themselves and to finally uh, mark themselves inside the cell okay so that's what we find mostly in the regulatory regions now again we can also find them inside the immunoglobulin gene regions which are responsible for antibody diversity so it's it, th so look these quadruplex structures are having enormous versatility by presenting themselves in various places so they are controlling the antibody diversity of controlling the regulatory uh, they uh, control the regulation of the genes and all these things now the sequences associated with the, they can also related to the sequences associated with human diseases so this is not an uh, important part as you can see this uh, human disease controlling regions or the regions which are depending uh, upon the human re uh, human diseases we can find this uh, the presence of this kind of quadruplex structures now uh, okay move on to the next slide now let us talk about the final uh, discussion of ours it is uh, about the slipped DNA now what do we mean by the slipped DNA so these names are actually helping us uh, to learn a lot actually because again the name suggests uh, slipped DNA is m is uh, some uh, is, is a part of the DNA which is formed due to the slipping of uh, some part of the nucleotide uh, sequences inside the DNA totally confusing right <laughs> so now let's look at the structure uh, look at the picture here so we have this uh, uh, picture 5 prime to 3 prime and this 3 prime to 5 prime so again uh, this normal picture now what we have here we have the direct repeat direct repeat regions uh, 1 and direct repeat 2 and again uh, we have the complementary that means direct repeat 1 and 2 that's something like okay complementary now what happens uh, as we are having only the direct repeats that means for example if we are having only a stretches of ad adenine here in the opposite side we will we'll have the stretches of thymine so what happens if some part of this adenine in this strand bulges out something like that so this part uh, bulges out and be cut it like that then what happens still uh, the opposite strand is able to make a bond with the rest of the chain because uh, there are lots of same type of uh, nucleotide bases are present there right so as we see in this picture so there are stretches of a until here stretches of t up, up to here so what happens if anything happens here if any part of the here deleted or uh, newly added then it, it, it do not create any kind of trouble uh, uh, for making the hydrogen bonding between these uh, bases because uh, they are still can form bonds uh, due to the presence of this complementary nature and the presence of this poly uh, base sequences or polynucleotide sequences okay so this is called this, the slipped DNA because the part of the DNA sequence here we can see are being looped out, are being slipped uh, uh, due to, uh, uh, at the time of uh, bond formation. These parts are get slipped. That's why they are called the slipped DNA and the formation of slipped DNA. Okay. So in the same process we can uh, we can see at this point. So some region of this point can be slipped and make a bulge uh, out structure like that, a b structure like a balloon here, and still uh, uh, the rest of it is able to form bonds. Okay. So this is the same way how uh, how the slip DNA can be formed. Now, what is the consequence? What are the important factors to make this kind of slip DNA? First thing, we have to have the polynucleotide sequences or the stretches of polynucleotide sequences. That means the same type of DNA sequences one after another uh, to have this kind of bonds. So same nucleotide sequence or whether A or T or C or G whatever, we have to have same types of sequence. Unless we are having the same types of sequence, we cannot make the slip DNA portion.
Now the slipped DNA portion helps uh, for the frame shift mutations. It helps in, uh, in, in incorporation of new code. It, uh, that means in the production of new amino acid to make different types of proteins. Sometimes it may uh, needs to form a different uh, a mutation which is helpful, which is positive in nature. Sometimes it will pro process uh, um, uh, anti-codon and that will uh, result in the termination of protein synthesis and uh, that can also be possible. That, that will shorten the actual uh, polypeptide sequence. So this kind of negative impact can also be shown uh, as a result of this slipped DNA formation. Now sometimes inside the cell, the formation of this kind of slipped DNA is really, really important to incorporate mutation inside the cell. Because as we know, mutations are the key players to have to gain variety, to gain variations. And these variations are the very good ornaments and the variations are the jewelry for, uh, for surviving in the natural selection process as we know. So it's all about maintaining uh, itself, maintaining uh, the DNA structure, maintaining the DNA diversity in, uh, in, uh, inside a cell throughout the evolutionary history. As we can see here, we have a template strand from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. We have a newly synthesized strand here, short. And what happened when, uh, when sometime something happens, as we can see, stretches of G and uh, stretches of A, whatever, we can see stretches of G in, uh, A in this place. So one of this A is getting uh, just buzzed out, one of the A is getting slipped uh, during the production of the other strand or the newly synthesis strand. Okay, so one of this A can be, uh, in this case, is slipped. So this kind of slipping can be uh, happen due to the uh, uh, due to the fault during the uh, replication process during the DNA replication process. So due to some kind of problem, the uh, or the arrangement of the beta clamps and all these things, all these polymerization techniques, uh, some part of uh, this can be hampered or some part of this can be slipped out. And as a result of this slipped out, a set of different uh, DNA is being formed like this. So this DNA, as we can see here, and after that, what happens after the disruption? of the hydrogen bonds between the, these two complementary DNA strands we can attach newly uh, newly synthesized new types of uh, nucleotide bases and to make different types of DNA strands so what we are forming after end of all this to make different types of DNA strands which are non canonical in structure which are having these bumps so we, we call them the slippy slipped DNA now the slipped DNA sometimes may lead to the positive effect to make a positive mutation sometimes they lead to the formation of negative mutation as you can see incorporation of uh, and uh, codes that are not coding for any protein that will stop the replica uh, the transcript translation process and that will stop the production of proteins inside the cell so they, this is a thing to control the replication and as well as the pr protein synthesis process inside the cell so uh, that's why the presence of sleep DNA is really important inside the cell now these are some negative consequences of uh, the production of the slippage of DNA during the replication uh, process as we know the presence of a ret uh, retarded uh, three base pair DNA sequences inside the DNA to make the slippage DNA uh, in a number of human genetic diseases can be caused, uh, including the fragile X syndrome as well as the Huntington's disease, which are really, really very famous diseases. And this kind of disease can be done according to the only three base pair flipping three base pair slippage. These diseases are characterized with the expansion of nucleotide triplet repeats that appear within the near specific genes so these are really really very dangerous genetic disorders that a person can achieve uh, they're just because the slippery of DNA okay so the slippage of DNA is not at all very very much important but sometimes it can incorporate new mutations that means new variations which helps uh, a cell to to maintain uh, the, themselves in the evolutionary context Okay, so that's all and I hope that's going to help you. Thank you.